Aloha, folks, and welcome back to Degree Free. We are your hosts, Ryan and Hannah Mariyama. On this podcast, we share fundamentals we've discovered and the mistakes we've made while self educating, getting work, building businesses, and making money. We'll tell you how to make it happen. No degree needed. Welcome back, folks. We're always happy to have you here on the podcast. And if you want to get our newsletter, which why wouldn't you, uh, you are going to want to run over to degreefree.co forward slash newsletter and get our free weekly newsletter that has degree free news, job ideas, apprenticeships, resources, and stuff that Ryan and I think is cool. So go on over and get that now. Yep, absolutely. And let's get into today's episode. Today, we are going to be talking about how to address an employment history gap on your resume. This is a huge one right now because everybody is struggling with this because of COVID. Yeah. And so let's just get into it. So I guess the first thing that we're going to be talking about is like, why is a work gap a big deal? I think the traditional answer is it shows that you're unemployable or something is wrong with you. Um, But I think I think that uh, something that is worth noting here is that hiring is just really risky for employers because it costs time and it costs money and they have to pick correctly. Yeah, exactly. And so hiring managers are just, they're willing to do whatever they can in order to cut down that risk, as you said, right? And even if that means using rules of thumb that may be inaccurate, right? So they'll use a rule of thumb that says like, okay, well, if you are unemployed for a certain amount of time, or if you had a work history gap, then you must not be employable. Why would I go with somebody that was out of work for two years versus this other person that's been working for the last two years? Yeah, r- like right, wrong. That's just how they're, this is how they're looking at it. Um, and so, you know, while I think that that stigma now is much, much more reduced as a result of the fact that so many people were out of work due to things that were beyond their control. Um, so now I think maybe it's probably, it's probably a little bit better just because somebody could just say, oh, it was, it was COVID. And they'd be like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Right, exactly. COVID policies, depending on where you live. It could have been years. Right, different for everybody, right? Yeah. I mean, it could be that your whole company went under. It could be that, Maybe you were furloughed for X amount of time and you thought that you were getting your job back and it didn't happen. Never happened. It just never happened. And so, all right, how do we deal with it? Right. All right. So the first thing that we that we're gonna do when we're dealing with it, the first thing we can do is just quote unquote creative formatting. Mm-hmm. Right. And so the first thing, and this is specifically with things that are on tip like really on your resume, right? The first thing that we can do is you can simply choose to omit the month on your on your resume and you can just go with years. A lot of times too it's just it, what, what that does is it just eliminates uh, a lot of it just eliminates a lot of wondering for no reason. Like just put years. Yeah. You know, like why put months cuz then it's just just why? Just why? I will say that especially if your employment gap is small and if you just omit months and you just go with years like if your employment gap was just a few months, nobody's going to notice if you just put years. Most people are not going to. Right, exactly. And they're not going to care. Exactly. And so the second way, as far as creative formatting goes, is that you can go with a lot of, you can go with a whole different type of resume. So what most people think of as resumes, they think of chronological, Mm -hmm. right? Or more accurately, I suppose, is reverse chronological. Right, you put all your work history up R- at the top. Right, so everybody knows how it's how how it is. So it's like your most recent to your you know next most recent, after and that. so on and so on. You can do a whole new format called functional resume, and the resume structure of that is going to be where you're focusing more on the skills that you've acquired and what you can do for the company with those skills. Right, so. With that type of resume, and we'll have some links to the different types of resume structure in the show notes because this this episode's a little um, it's a little tough to kind of understand if you're not looking at a resume. It's it's visual, right? Exactly. So we'll put some uh, links in the show notes to greasefree.co. But what we're gonna want to do with the functional is focus on the skills that you've acquired and what you can do for the company. Another thing that you can do as well is you can maybe make a larger 
professional summary or objective statement at the top, Mm -hmm. right? And what this all does is it works to push your work history down to the bottom, Mm -hmm. right? So you focus on what you can do for the company. Skills first. Skill, what skills you have and what you, you know, your professional summary or what you're trying to do with your objective statement. Value first, basically. You're putting that all at the top and then your work history kind of gets buried at the bottom, Mm -hmm. right? Because your work history, ideally your work history is more boring than your skill set. <laughs> right. 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 Like you'd rather than be compelled by what you can do than what you have done. Yeah. You know. This this type of resume. There's so much resume advice and different. Yeah. Right. It, it doesn't really, I mean, it, does, it does, absolutely matters the way you use it, but, you know, definitely experiment. Because mm-hmm. right. there's no wrong necessarily way to do it. There's just different ways. Right. And if it gets you a job, it gets you a job. Mm-hmm. And so it was right if it worked. Right. So definitely... Those are two ways that you can actually address it on your resume without doing anything else, Mm -hmm. right? Without really changing your resume too much, just by formatting it a little bit differently, we can address it from different angles, Mm -hmm. right? The next thing that we're going to, that I want to talk about is, I mean, just telling them what you've been doing. I like this approach because it's really straightforward. (laughs) Just tell them what in the world is going on. Um, I, I like this too, especially for, um, for stay-at-home parents, especially, um, that that that's a question that we get a lot. It was like, I'm, I, you know, I've been a stay-at-home mom for however long, and like, how do I how do I show that on a resume? I was like, just tell them that's what you're doing. I mean, for, I I don't think that people look at that and go, oh, well, that's easy, <laughs> right? Like nobody's gonna look at that and go, oh yeah, like you're a stay you're a stay-at-home parent. Well, that's easy. Like that's a lot of work. Everybody knows that. Yep, yeah, absolutely, and. Not only that, but as exacerbated by COVID and COVID policies and everything like that, a lot of people are going to be much more forgiving or at least understanding of that, right? You can just easily say that I was a stay-at-home parent and I didn't feel safe for my kids to be at daycare or for my kids to be at school or whatever. Or there was no one else to watch them. Right. There was no one else to watch them. Whatever. I mean, whatever whatever it is. Mm Mm-hmm. And I mean, people know people are going to understand that it's not like it's not like their life wasn't also affected by it. If it didn't happen to them, it probably happened to someone they knew. Right. The other thing is that, you know, if you took time to pursue self-employment or freelance opportunities, then just say it. Oh my gosh, the amount of small business owners, this drives me nuts too. And I realize I used to do it, but since I've since since I've realized if you are a small business owner, listen up, do not leave that off of your resume, especially if it makes a gap. Like, why would you do that? You you did more work because you were self-employed. That means that you were running the entire business, right? But they leave it off like it's not employment. It is. It's it's so much work and you did so much stuff too. Put that on your resume. Don't leave it off. Especially if it leaves a gap. Especially then. Absolutely. And I don't get it either. I mean, I used to do it too, right? And the thing about it is that Nobody's going to look down on you because now you struck it on your own and you did it for two years, five years, whatever. And now, okay, maybe it's not making as much money as it, you, whatever the reason is. And it might not be that it's not making enough money. It might be that you it want healthcare <laughs> or it doesn't take up as much of your time as it, as it used to, or as you thought, and you can pick up another job, whatever the reason is. Yeah, there's no reason to leave that off your resume because it's so valuable, right? It's so valuable listing the skills that you've acquired during this time and what you've done, your accomplishments and what you've created is huge. Yeah. And it's totally, absolutely relevant Mm -hmm. to any role that you're applying to. It's work you did, people. Don't leave it off. It's super, it's super important to explain that. Yeah. Freelancing, owning your own business, anything you did like that, do not leave that off. It's very, very, it's good. Put it on there. If you took classes for like online, if you took classes online. Of any kind. Of any kind. Assuming that there are professional classes, like if you're trying to be a graphic design, you know, 
person or whatever and you've been working in a boot camp or a course or, or whatever coding alone or if you're trying to get into sales for or, six months and you you took these online courses put it on your resume mm -hmm. right like say that's what you're doing say that's what you were doing you were furthering your career you were learning portfolio building experience getting exactly and craft a story that makes sense to the job that you're applying to mm -hmm. right make it make sense to them right exactly okay Maybe it's not super relevant, your graphic design class, if you're trying to be a janitor. Right? I mean, maybe it's not super relevant, right? But if it makes sense, then try to weave it as best as possible. Yeah. Now, I want to be very clear about one thing. And that is what to avoid. <laughs> right? And what we want to avoid is basically highlighting <laughs> irresponsibility. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to go up there and say, man, I hit it big on crypto. And so I quit my job. Like I balled outrageous for two years, you know, yachts, Teslas, vacations, Vegas. Vegas. <laughs> You know what I mean? And and, and now I'm broke. And because don't <laughs> because the market took a dip. I need a job. I need a job. <laughs> right. That might be true. And you might have balled out, Rager. Don't tell them that. <laughs> good for you. I hope you had fun because now you get to work again. <laughs> good for you. That's great. We're not gonna say that. Let's gonna let's leave that one out. <laughs> right. Exactly. And so as long as you don't say that, you can recover from an employment gap. Yeah. So right? put write that down, people. Don't don't tell them that you were a Dogecoin millionaire for a year and six months. Leave that off. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Like, unless it's for some for some reason it was relevant, maybe. Unless you're applying to a crypto job. Or maybe you had a trading strategy that, 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 that got like, you everything. Yeah, you, you wrote a formula or an algorithm or something. Right, exactly. Or you built unless, an app. unless it was relevant to the thing that you're doing. But, you know, it's like, yeah. oh, yeah, I, I hit it big and now I'm broke. I need a job. Yeah, don't. Don't let's, do that. Let's not do let's, right. Silence and is best in this case. Pretty period. much anything short of that, you can recover from a gap in your resume yeah. especially nowadays yeah okay so the next the next thing is going to be focusing on the future so don't focus on the past and say that for the two the last two years you were trying to go pro at call of duty let's let's again this is something that let's not focus on that <laughs> even if that's what you were doing <laughs> let's not tell them that we're not going to do that they we're don't want to hire you if you tell them that <laughs> yeah you're not going to tell them that you spent six months not putting pants on and leaving the house yeah. you did nothing but grubhub and uber eats yeah. you're, we're not going to talk about that there's no shame in the game but don't yeah don't tell them yeah. that don't focus on the year that you haven't been putting your skills to work, yep. right? Like we're going to be focusing on the future, right? And we kind of touched on this a little bit last episode as well, or I think a, maybe a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. but we want to make sure that we can focus on the future and how your skills can bring value to the company Going forward. Going forward. Yeah. In that position. Whatever value is in that position, whether it's saving money, increasing revenue, decreasing costs, increasing efficiency, whatever value is in that, you're going to be focusing on that. Yeah. Don't say this is what the past was like. You know, what you're trying to get them to look towards is the future, which is good because most people want to look to more towards the future than towards the past. So just direct just direct towards the future. Exactly. In the future on your team, I'll do this. Not in the past, I did this. Right. Yeah. Like I said, it's becoming much more acceptable to have work gaps on your resume. But if your employer, your prospective employer, you know, keys in on it, there's going to be at least two things you want to do. The first thing is going to be for yourself. And you got to remember while you're sitting in that seat, it's probably in the interview, right? Because that's that's probably where we're at. We're in the interview. We're at the negotiation stage. Probably not the negotiation. We're probably interviewing. Mm -hmm. And they're bringing this up. They see the two years that you just totally omitted it. Let's say you didn't use creative formatting. And let's tell them, let's say that you didn't tell them what you've been doing, mm -hmm. right? And you just totally omitted it. You said, I last time I worked was 2018. And then 2020, you had a job till current. And you're like, what did you do from 2018 to 2020? Yeah, they say, what were you doing? Right, exactly. You have to remember that there is a reason that you're in that room. 
right? Remember that this person, whoever it is, they probably saw your resume before, Mm -hmm. right? And if they didn't see your resume, the recruiter saw your resume, whoever it was, the gatekeeper for you sitting down in front of the decision maker, they saw your resume and you made it. You maybe not deserve to be there, but you've made it there. Mm -hmm. And there's something that they saw in you that means, okay, you can get around this, right? I mean, yeah. just remain calm, be confident, right? Going forward, you you do belong in that room, mm-hmm. right? There's a reason you're there. Yep, they let you they let you in already. So, you know, there's a bunch of people that weren't called back, mm-hmm. right? There's a bunch of people that, that applied to that job. Everybody's applying to jobs nowadays, everybody. Mm-hmm. They didn't get the call back, you did. Mm-hmm. Right. So you're already doing better than they are. So you just got to remember that. Mm-hmm. The second thing is exa- exactly what we're talking about now. So just spin the conversation around and make it about the future. Right. Like they say, oh, what are we doing? Well, you know, d- you, you give whatever, whatever explanation that you've come up with. And then you just say, what I'd really like to talk about is how I'm going to use this to do this with your company. Or what I'm really, you know, what I'd really like to know about is this program you folks are building out, right? If you did your research on the company before you go into the interview and you say, what I'm really excited about is this initiative you folks are doing. I think I can help with that like this. Exactly. And I'm, now they're looking at now in their, in their head, they're seeing you with the company in the future, not worried about whatever you did two years ago or six months ago. Crafting, crafting the story to make it about the future and making it so that they understand that you are also a part of the future of that company as well Mm -hmm. and where that company is going and where you're going to help, you know, help them get to. Yeah. Especially because too, and fundamentally too, you got to remember that recruiters are human, right? And the past is boring and the future is exciting. So just, just lean into that too. So this would probably be an episode all by itself, but quickly some things you can do are figuring out what you're missing in order to get into your next role, right? I mean, that's a big one. So looking, what we mean by that is kind of looking at the job descriptions that you're looking at, figuring out the skills that you lack on that, and then going and get those skills. Mm -hmm. So another example is like, you're applying to all these jobs and you're actually getting interviews, but you're not sealing the deal. All right, well you probably have to work on your interview skills. And so take this time to work on your interview skills. Take this time to learn the skills that you don't already have. And another thing is uh, if you're looking to get into a new field and you have little to no experience or qualifications or or skill in this area, what you need to do, and this is something we call it finding a job backwards, and it's actually in our degree-free workbook, which is on our, which is on our website, but we go into depth about this. And that is you need to be breaking down job descriptions and figuring out what the minimum effective dose of skill, qualification, certification, et cetera, is needed to get the attention of someone who's looking at the resumes for these jobs. Like it's really simple to do this. It just takes work. You know, it's it's not easy, but it is simple. And, um, you know, you just have to remember like minimum effective dose. There's only, there's a certain amount that you need in order to get your foot in the door. And, you know, you can take online classes, you can educate yourself. Um, you know, we, we live in the age of the internet. And so you can find pretty much anything online to teach yourself. And so like defining the job backwards is a really huge thing that a lot of people are missing. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, I'm not, trying, I'm not guessing here because I mean, people talk to us all the time and they're like, how do I do that? Right. And I'll admit I was one of those people prior to thinking about it, right. Prior to coming up with this, right. Looking at a job is so simple when you think about it though, looking at a job description and then picking out the skills. So before I really knew about finding a job backwards, I would look at job descriptions and I would be like, whatever it says, I don't know, Excel, advanced Excel skills and whatever the functions are that they want me to know. I don't know those. That's not, that's not me, whatever. Mm-hmm. Right. And then I would X, I would X out of that browser tab. Oh, yep. That's not me. X. That's not me. X. Mm-hmm. Right. I'd be self-eliminating myself from these jobs. Yeah. And what I should be doing, what I should have done 
is I should have taken taken note of all the similarities of all the job fields. Okay, Excel keeps popping up. Excel keeps popping up. Yep. I better go learn Excel. I keep seeing Adobe Premiere. I keep seeing Premiere. Right. I yep exactly. I keep seeing Illustrator. Illustrator keeps coming up. Trello. Trello keeps coming up. Asana. You know all these mm-hmm. all these different softwares or all these different skills or whatever. You know this. You, you're like okay. Instead of you thinking, okay, that's not me. I need to go find a job that has my skill set. You can think of it backwards and say, all right, those are the skills that I need. This is now my laundry list or this is my to-do list. Of what I need to learn. Of what I need to learn. Mm-hmm. Right. And like I said, we go into depth in that in our workbook, degreefree.co, if you guys want to check it out. Yeah. But but what's funny about that is like, really, we call it finding a job backwards, but it's really finding a job forwards, Right. Because in the US, we teach it backwards. We're like, just guess and buy whatever thing and then go see where that thing fits. Like, no, that makes absolutely no sense. That's stupid, right? Because why would we go to a third party and buy something when the person who we need the thing from, which is the employer, is telling us what they need and the thing that we're buying may or may not fit because we didn't look at the employer first. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> the last thing that I wanted to talk about is... We, we hear this all the time, which is why I want to talk about it is like when you're in an employment gap, a lot of times it's easy to get to get lost in the woods and maybe not understand what you want to do. Mm-hmm. Right. A lot of people say you just got laid off and due to COVID and you've been out of work for like two years and now you've been applying to jobs here and there. You've been applying to jobs here and there. And this this these are stories that we hear all the time. And. But now you're just like, man, I don't know what I want to do. Mm hmm. Okay, so you have to, you got to do a little bit of soul searching. Yeah. Right? I mean, and we have personal friends, family that's going through this right now, mm-hmm. really. And something when I, you know, I went on a whole vision quest. Vision quest or whatever. Anyway, I don't want to get into it. But, <laughs> you know, I did by myself. And that's a story for another time, a tangent for another time. This episode is getting way too long as it is. So, but one of the things, one of the books that really helped me was Travels with Charlie. It's by John Steinbeck. And it's just... It's a must read, people. It's just him. It's a John Steinbeck going around the entire US in his pickup truck at, with his dog, Charlie. Yeah. And it's just, it's just a whole story not a story i mean it's like autobiography yeah he, yeah, he did it he actually did it right about 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 his journey mm-hmm. right and, and and i mean he did it as a man mm-hmm. he was a man he was married yeah and it's funny at the beginning of the book he just tells his wife uh he's like you know he basically he's getting a little older right he's getting on in years and he basically just tells his wife wife i love you but if i don't leave now i'll be an old man and she's like all right, bye. <laughs> yeah. And you don't, and, and basically you don't want to be with the person, you don't want to be with the person that doesn't search for his soul. Yeah. Right. Yep. You like. And he I phrases it as only John right. Steinbeck can. I don't want to be somebody that doesn't know what they want in the world. Yeah. And you don't want to be with somebody that doesn't know what they want. Yeah. And, and goes, therefore oh. I must go. Right. Right. And, you know, so without getting too sobby or anything like that, read it. Tra- travels with Charlie. We, Good we'll, book. We'll link to it in the show notes. And by far for me personally, and let me just rant real real quick on my last tangent of this episode, I promise. It is the best book that John Steinbeck ever, ever wrote. It is. It is. It East is of good. Eden, horrible. I love East of Eden. Grapes of Wrath, yawn. Awful. And then Of Mice and Men, that thing is that thing is garbage. Okay, it is a travesty. It is a travesty. Like it's, it might be a crime. The fact that that is the John Steinbeck book that they have picked to make people read in school because that will guarantee you never get to any of the good. Books. Right, <laughs> that book that, is the worst. I mean, I, there, he, I, for like I said, I just crapped all over his other his other books. No, he's the Eden is good, but like sure, whatever. Maybe for for for, 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 for some for, for some. some people that have terrible taste. Yeah, books. exactly. For those that have terrible taste in books, East of Eden is a great book. East of Eden is for, a great for book. The, okay. For the mature people that understand like nuance and sure. right, sure. you know, the, the enlightened, the educated. Right. Obviously, <laughs> probably because I don't have a college degree. Yeah, that's exactly. what it is. That's exactly right. I can't appreciate it. <laughs> Anyway, guys, yeah, ch- check all those books. Let me don't know. accept for my event. Don't read that. Let me know how wrong I am. Contact at degreefree.co. 
Let me let me know how wrong I am. But really, Travel to Charlie, if you guys are really soul searching, there's a few other books as well. But that one really helped me personally when I was going through something like that as well. Um, and without further ado, I think that's pretty much it. Yes. Think yeah. So. All right. Excellent. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening. If you guys like this episode, please like and subscribe. If you guys want to support the podcast, the best way that you can do is by leaving us a short review wherever you get your podcasts. If you guys need any links to any of the resources, the books that we mentioned, all that, that's going to be at degreefree.co. We have all the show notes there for you guys. And then if you want to get a weekly email from Ryan and I, which of course you do, you're going to want to go, go on over to degreefree.co forward slash newsletter to get um, a weekly email from us about jobs, apprenticeships, news, books, and other things that Ryan and I think are cool. And I think that's pretty much it. Until next time, guys. Aloha.